Hey, welcome to this demo video. Today we're going to be looking at interacting with Google Sheets with um, an API or programmatically. Um, so you might have like a Google Sheet, right? It's just a web-based version of kind of like an Excel type system um, that you have data in and you treat it as a spreadsheet. And what Google has provided is a way that you can interact with these spreadsheets programmatically. So if you're writing an application that wanted to talk to uh, a Google Sheet, you could do that. Um, and the thing is, there's a couple ways of approaching this. And it really depends on what you want to do with the, your data um, and how you want to interact with the sheet. Um, the first option is if you only need to read the data from a sheet. So say you ha are treating a Google Sheet as kind of like a data store and you want to pull data back from uh, that store to do something with your program, right? Um, Google Sheets, you know, is collaborative, so you can, this could be a kind of an interesting way to, to get data into your script. Um, and doing that, you only need to kind of publish a sheet and then you can access it as JSON. Um, the second way of interacting with the Google Sheets is through their API. And this is much more kind of um, involved to uh, get access and, and get it working. But the nice thing about the API is that you can actually write to the sheets too, as opposed to the, just reading the JSON only. Um, so we're gonna look at both ways and really depending on, on your needs of your project, your script, it depends on if you're going to use a read-only way of talking to the JSON uh, and representation of the sheet, or actually, you know, you need to actually write to the sheet. So you're gonna be, have to use the, the API. Um, so to get started, we're going to just do the first one, which is a little bit more straightforward. We're going to create a sheet and read it as JSON. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to um, our Google Drive. And um, we're going to create a new sheet, basically. So I'm just going to make a new spreadsheet. And so uh, what we want to do is, you know, just put some test data here. And the first thing you need to do is when you want to um, access this sheet uh, programmatically th through the JSON endpoint, um, you need to publish it. And so in the top left corner here, you go to File, and you say um, Publish this to the web. And then you say entire document, and you say start publishing. It says, are you sure you want to publish the document? Okay. And so now it gives you this URL, and there's a couple of pieces of this URL, um, but one of them is the the UR the kind of the the sheets ID that you're going to be using. So we're going to copy this for now, and keep going. And so the next thing we want to do is, you know, we we need to um, access the sheets and um, share it. So it's like, because we're logged into this to the website, so we're also going to share it and make sure that we can um, make sure it changes with anyone with the link. And then we have this link, which should be very similar to the one we just uh, produced. All right, so now it's kind of like published to the web and shared, um, so anyone should be able to to access it. So we're going to go back to our, uh, we're going to make a web uh, script to interact with this. So we're going to go and make a new script and we're going to um, uh, basically treat this this job, this job uh, Google Sheets as a JSON endpoint. And so if we're going to act, interact with the web, we need to have a way to um, uh, you know, reach out to the web and pull back information. And so as usual, we're, we're gonna be using the request module to do that. Um, so if you have, um, don't know how to use the request module, there's a whole video about that. So you can go refer to that video. Um, all right. So we're going to um, uh, in, make a new uh, file here. Uh, and we're going to save it in my, I'm just gonna put it in my downloads directory. I'm going to call it uh, sheetread.py. All right, so we're going to import the requests module. And now that we have the request module, we're going to, we have to build the URL to get the, the data. And so the URL is going to be um, 
kind of a combination of the sheet ID and um, adding this additional um, piece to the end of it. So the the URL is basically the form template for it for for it is this. So you have your Google sheet code and then the sheet page number. So which because you know each Google sheets has multiple sheets and it could have multiple sheets and then this kind of alt JSON. So you're basically telling it to come back as JSON. So we need to check, get this Google Sheets code, which if we go back to our um, um, Google Sheet, that is this code up here in, in, this, in this top part here. It's between like the D slash D and the edit. And it should also be in here. If you go get the link, here it is again. All right, so this should be the um, the kind of Google Sheet code that we need. So we'll go back to here and change our Google Sheet code with that uh, ID that we just pulled in. And then the sheet number is um, basically the it's numerical, the number of sheets that you have in your document. So we just have one sheet, so we'll say one. And so that it should be our URL. So if everything's published right, then it should be able to pull that data in. Um, so we built the URL there. So what we're going to do is do um, r equals request dot get, right? And then just pass the URL variable to say, get this. All right, so let's just see if this actually worked. So we're going to print out the r dot status code, see what the status code is. And then we're going to print out the r dot um, text. Um, of the request. So I'm going to go over to my terminal and go to my downloads. Um, and I'm going to run Python 3 uh, read or sheet read.py. Um, okay, so the first problem is you should spell status correctly. Status code. And then let's try it again. All right, so we got something back, right? So we got a bunch of data coming back and it's promising, right? Because we got a 200 status code and then we got a bunch of uh, basically JSON blob of, of information. So this is pretty hard to read. So let's format it using the JSON module. And so we're gonna go back here and say import JSON. Um, and so now we're going to turn the text from the request into JSON. So we're going to say data equals um, uh, JSON.loads, S for the string. And we're going to pass in the R.text. And so now data, uh, data is now the JSON dictionary of that JSON uh, representation. So now that we have it as a JSON dictionary, we can then actually convert it back into text as JSON and format it nicely. So we'll say print. Uh, json.dumps with the s and then the variable data but we'll also say indent it um, by two so we should see this whole um, result back from the server but a little bit more nicely formatted this time all right so it's a fairly kind of complex json dictionary right and so we can see it's a dictionary with this curly bracket and then it has like some version and encoding information there's this feeds variable or feeds key um, and so what we want to do, right, is get into the kind of the um, information that's in actually in the sheet. And so it looks like everything lives under feed, right? And then there's um, sub keys of update, category, title, link, author, there's me. Um, results and then there's this entry tab and this entry or entry key is like an, a list right and so i can come in here and see that there is this test a1 cell that i put in there so that is the the value that i put into the sheets right so i can see it actually came back and so it looks like each um cell right is going to be represented as as this in one of the entries and so this is the A1 cell, and then this is the type that's in there, and then this is the value. Um, so let's put another, uh, let's go back to the Google Sheets and put another value in just to see how it works. I'll put one in like E, 
10. And let's put a number this time, like 1,000. All right, so if we go run it again, hopefully we see that it has more entries in that entry category, and we should see if it works. So let's go back and run this again. All right, so now here's that test cell. That's our first cell, A1 cell. Um, here it is, A1. And then we can see again that there is another entry. And this one is E10. And it is still text and it's a value. Um, but this also has some numerical values information here where the other one did not have that. It just had like text. So it looks like it it treats it as a, you know, it knows it's a number and it tells you that's the data type. That's a number, but it doesn't come off, come across as numbers. So you still have to turn it into a number in Python and if you wanted to. All right, so let's um, just kind of like write us a, a loop here that just loops through all the values in a um, list of the uh, spreadsheet and print out each one. So let's go back and add a couple more entries just for fun here. Uh, let's add a date um, and let's add a another string. So now we should have four entries in that list of things. Um, and then let's add um, C C one test C two one cell. All right, so we'll, we'll just look how it looks again, just to see if we can glean any more information from it. What's pretty nice is you can see like there's no there's really no delay in the API right it's it's immediately updated. Um, so we have more information about the C one. There's the B B one and then there's the A one. All right. So as you can see, it's a pretty kind of rudimentary access to the spreadsheet right because it's like basically just each cell. And if there's some sort of like logic to the spreadsheet, like, you know, rows mean something and stuff like that, you'd have to implement that yourself. But at least you can actually programmatically access it, which is very cool. So let's um, let's write a loop just to loop through each entry in this, each cell and print out its value um, and its position. Um, all right, so we know that this is the root of it. And then we have a first key is called uh, feed, feed. So we can write that. All right, so let's comment that out in our code and we'll write a for loop. So we'll say for cell in. So we wanna start with our data and then we're gonna say feed, right? That's the first entry. And then we're gonna to go to the next level down, which would be the, let's look at our spreadsheet again. And the next level down, which would be the entry key. So we'll say feed and then entry. And then entry is a list. So each one of those things in the list would be represented as cell in, in our loop, right? So let's print out um, the cell and we'll see if this works. All right, so we got some results here. So each one of these is a cell in the sheet, right? And so what we can do is now access the individual structure of each one of these cells. And so we know that um, there's an ID key here. Um, there is a title here, which stores the, the um, position or the name of the cell. And then there's the content. So let's try printing out the title and the content and see if we can get that, just those two things printing out. All right, so I went ahead and added just, instead of printing out the whole thing, I'm just printing out the title and the content. So let's see if that works. 
Yeah, right. So we're printing out the, the, the title key and then the content key. So we can print those two together and it looks like this, the data is actually stored in this thing called dollar sign T, which you need to make sure that that's like always called that, but it seems like it is. So we can say dollar sign T. So just let's print out the cell number and then the value for that cell. If we change it to um, say, okay, just print out the dollar sign T for that one and then the dollar sign T for this one. All right, let's see if it works. Yeah, so you, you can kind of like navigate around the sheet, right? If you have this information, if you know exactly what cell you're in and what's its value, you could do all sorts of stuff with it. So this is a very straightforward way of um, interacting with sheets in a read-only mode. Um, basically, just publishing the sheet, making sure you share it, uh, allowing anyone to you know access it, and then using this kind of um, request and build that URL to grab that um, piece uh, of whatever cell you want to interact with. So the next one we're going to look at is actually going beyond just reading using this JSON endpoint, and we're going to actually use the Sheets um, API to read and write. All right, so we've seen how we can read all, kind of read a, a, a spreadsheet from uh, Google Sheets using uh, the, the JSON endpoint, um, but that's read only, right? It's just a, a JSON representation of that sheet. So what we want to do is actually figure out a way to write to a sheet as well as in, in addition to reading it. So in order to do that, we need to have kind of a much more complicated um, involved uh, interaction with uh, our, our Google Sheets. And so uh, Google Sheets has provided an API that you can interact with it that way. Um, so basically an API just lets you say, okay, take the sheet, you know, change the value here, uh, update the value there, give me the value in that position, et cetera. And so if you kind of research this and how to use this, this Sheets API, you come across you know, the Quick Start Guide here and it has some very kind of elaborate setup and steps to do. And so I was curious if someone had already kind of come along and made this process a little bit easier. And I came across this um, module, Python module, called PYG Sheets or PYG Sheets, and it is basically a wrapper uh, around the Python uh, Sheets, uh, sorry, the Google Sheets version or um, API. So basically, a wrapper is just a, a simplified interaction of the API. So it does all the API calls, but it, it kind of simplifies the, the way of doing it via Python. And so I thought we could give this one, this um, module a try as of you know late 2020. Um, we'll see if it gives if it works um, and what we need to do to get it set up to start working. All right, so uh, we know this is going to be much more involved thing. So obviously you can imagine you know the API doesn't just let anyone update a spreadsheet that is on the on their system. You have to do some sort of auth authentication, right? You have to authenticate yourself to. Google somehow to say, hey, let, let the script update the spreadsheet that is actually um, belongs to me, but I wanted to, you know, change the values in something. So the first thing we need to do, right, is actually install this module. And so if we look, uh, it says you can install from just doing a pip install and then the, the name of the module is PG Sheets. But then it also says, um, you know, it, you can also install from GitHub directory directly and it says that's more recommended. So basically to do that, you just give it this uh, pip install and then you put the URL to the, the actual URL to the distribution code. So we can do that. So we'll go to our um, console. We'll say pip3 uh, install and then this the URL to GitHub. Let's see what it does. All right. So it's a, installed everything. Um, there's no errors. Um, and that's just a warning about pip. So that was installed. So let's go back to the directions. Um, all right, so you need to obtain an OAuth 2 credential from Google Developer Console for Google Spreadsheets API and Drive API and save the file as clientsecrets.json in the same directory as the project. So this is where we get into our authentication problem. And so basically OAuth is just a way to authenticate yourself to a service 
um, and it's very kind of like web-based authentication. And so basically it's saying you need to get this OAuth set up and save the file called in a file called clientseekers.json and that will be like your ticket to, to interact with with um, things. So there's a read more here. So let's go to read more. And it says, okay, so authorizing PYG sheets. Um, so head over to Google Developer Console. So of course you have to have a Google account for this. So I'm gonna go over there. And it says, um, create a new project or select one you have. All right, so I'm gonna um, create a new project here. Um, so I'm going to say new project. I'm going to say PFCH um, sheets demo. Okay, create. Um, all right, so I can have underscores. So I'm going to say PFCH demo create. All right, so now I have this new um, project up here and I can click up here and select it. All right, and it says I don't have any APIs en enabled yet. So the next direction says, click enable APIs and services and search for Sheets API. So I'm gonna search for Sheets. Sheet API. Uh, and I'm going to enable this. All right, so that's enabled. Did that. And similarly, do enable Drive API. This is a required Drive API for getting a list of spreadsheets, deleting them, etc. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my project and I'm going to um, go back now. Go back here and say enable API again, search for drive API and say yes, enable this API as well. And let's see. All right, no, so now you have to choose the type of credentials you want to use for this. Um, we have two following options, OAuth credentials. This is the best option. If you're trying to edit the spreadsheet on behalf of others using this method, your script can get access to all the spreadsheets on the account. This authorization process giving password and email has to be completed only once, which grants full application uh, access to the user sheets. Follow this procedure below to get the client secrets. Okay, first you need to configure uh, how the uh, consent screen will look while asking for authorization. Go to credentials tabs, slide and choose OAuth consent screen and input all the required data in the form. All right. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard, go to OAuth consent screen. Um, so you have two types, user types, only available to users within your organization. You will not need to submit your app for verification. External, available to any user with Google account. Let's just do internal. I don't know if that matters. Oh, this is I'm not a G Suite user, so I can't do that. I'll do external. So create uh, app name PFCH sheets demo user support email. This is my email address. No app logo. Let's see what else we need to fill in here. And put all the required data from the form. All right. is my email address. All right, save and continue. Email address supposed to be selected. Okay, save and continue. And email address must be selected.
selected. Let me just fill out some other stuff. See what it says. An email address must be selected. It is selected. For users to contact you with questions about their consent, selected this developer account email address, also me. Save and continue. Um, all right, scopes. I don't need scopes, I don't think. Save and continue. Optional info. No optional info. Save and continue. Back to dashboard. We are currently experiencing service disruptions and are unable to provide quote information at this time. Okay. All right. So now we need to go to, it says go to credentials tab and choose create credentials, OAuth client ID. OAuth client ID. It says, choose uh, application type as other. There is no other available for us. So we're going to say desktop app. Uh, click on next um, client name. We'll leave it as desktop client one. All right, create. OK. Um, all right, uh, next click the download button to download the client secret JSON file. Make sure you remember where you saved it. All right, so we'll say great, and we're gonna say download. All right, so download the, this key. All right, um, by default authorized, expects the file name client secrets.json in the working directory. So that's where your script is. Um, if you did not save the file there and rename it, make sure to set the path. All right, so we're just gonna be the, the default. All right. Service account. A service account is an account associated with an email. This account is authenticated with a pair of public private keys, making it more secure than other options. All right, this is the second way of authenticating. We just did the OAuth. All right, so we did it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is um, um, we want to um, import this module and then authorize it. So we'll see if that even works based on this file that we just downloaded. So if I, it downloaded it, but it called it like um, client secret with this very long information on it. So I'm just going to rename it to client secrets the way that this thing wants it to be. Um, it wants to be called client secrets.json, client secret.json. So I'm just going to rename it to that. So it's in my downloads directory, it's client secret.json. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we will try it out. So let's make a new Python script after all that. Um, let's call it. Uh, sh sheets tests. I know we'll call it um, PYG sheets test dot py. All right, so we know we need to uh, import the module that we've been working with, and so that's called import py sheets. This example they use numb which is a like statistical kind of um, module. We don't need to use that for our example. All right, so we're going to import it. So let's just see if that works, right? 
So we'll say Python, Python 3, PYG sheets, Python 3, PYG sheets. Oh, I need to go to my downloads. Python 3, PYG sheets. All right, so I imported the module that worked. So now let's try this piece of code they say we should do next, which is um, authorize. So we'll put that in there and we'll run that. All right, so basically it says, please go to this very long web address to authenticate the flow. So I'm going to go to that web address. I'm saying sign in um, for an account. So I'm going to sign in with my account. So this app isn't verified. OK, I'm going to click on advanced and say, keep going. It's OK. This is grant PFCH demo sheets permission to edit, see, delete your Google Drive files. OK. Grant PFC demo sheets permission to uh, Create, edit, delete spreadsheets in Google Drive. Okay. So we can now edit drive files and edit sheet files. So allow, copy this code, switch to your application and paste it there. All right, so I'm copying that code, going over to my terminal and pasting it there. All right, so nothing happens. We didn't do anything else with the script, but let's try to run it again. And hopefully it doesn't do that again because now it's authenticated. All right, so no, so apparently we do that once in the setup, right? So we'd probably wanna run the script first and get that authentication working. Um, and then now it's hooked up and we should be ready to go. So let's see how to work with the module to do the rest of the stuff we wanna do. Um, all right, so next thing we need to do, so this example, they're creating a sheet, a new sheet. We actually have an existing sheet, so we don't want to do that. Um, open a spreadsheet, okay. Um, if you want to be specific, use a key. So we can actually um, open a sheet based on the key, right? And that's the same key that we saw in our JSON example. So let's try that. So we're going to authorize and we're going to say sheet open by key and then we're going to go grab the key which is just this we're going to use the same spreadsheet that we use in the json example and it's just this um, middle bit of the url there we'll place that in our code let's run that and see if we get any errors No errors, nice. And now finally, let's figure out what we can do with the sheets. All right, operations on spreadsheet. All right, so we can open the sheet, so we can add a worksheet, we can add a worksheet, we can delete worksheet, we can select a worksheet, right? So that's what we're gonna wanna do. So um, we probably wanna select the worksheet based on, oh, sorry. Um, so we now we, we got to this point where we open a spreadsheet by ID. And so what we want to do is some op operations on the spreadsheet. So we can add a worksheet, uh, delete a worksheet, remove permissions of a worksheet. Um, we actually want to work with the spreadsheet's contents. So first we need to find the sheet that we want to work on, right? Because we have the document, but now we need the sheet uh, the tabs along the bottom, right? So by any property. So we could say worksheet find uh, the index zero, right? So the, that would be like the first sheet. If we had a name, we could also find it by the name, um, but we're just gonna call, uh, get the first one. So let's try doing that. All right, so let's save that and run it again, see if it works. Uh, it says SH is not defined because our sheet is called sheet one. So let's just change this to SH instead of SHT. All right, no errors. All right. So now we have, we got the document that we're spreadsheet. Then we got the worksheet, the sheet at the bottom. We selected the first one. And so now what else can we do? 
we can. Um, get values, insert rows, update values. All right, so let's try getting a value. Get a values is a 2D array matrix, which can be easily converted into a numpy array or as a, or as cell list. All right, let's just see if that works. All right, so we're gonna say get values, start zero, zero, and 2020. Hmm. Okay, let's see what that does. All right, so this is a list of lists, right? So each list represents data in the spreadsheet, right? So each row, it's very similar to CSV, right? So each row is a list, each row is one of the items in the list and each internet inside of that, each item in that list is a cell. So that's cool. Um, let's see if there's a different way of interacting with it. Um, we can also get values by indexes. And then we can, um, so we can actually treat it like a big, um, so if we wanted to treat it like this, we could do this as well, right? So we could say um, A1, um, we could say A1 equals worksheets zero, zero, right? The A column and then the zero first row, which is the one, so this would be A1. So let's print that. Index starts at one, okay. Cell not found, all right. Let's change this to zero, one. Index starts at one. Let's change that to one, one. Okay, so we got um, the first cell, which is one one, um, row A one, and so you, you know it provides many ways of interacting with this um, sheets, right? And you can select and slice and dice it based on ranges and stuff like that, um, all sorts of stuff. So um, one thing we want to do also is being able to update stuff. That's right. That's all point of this. We want to update. Um, a cell. Um, oh, and here's a different way of interacting with it. You can actually say worksheet dot cell and then give it the position. So if you want to like the, you know, just use the, the, the sheets notation of coordinates, you can also do that. Um, all right, but back to our goal is to actually write something to the sheet. So let's try to write something to B3. Uh, so the third row in the B column. So we need to update a range. So it says update values. Um, so let's see if this works. So we'll say update values. So we're gonna say B, we're just gonna say B three, and it's not a range, so it's B three. We're gonna say values equals hello there. And let's run this and see if it gets an error. All right, so it says matrix, or it says value should be matrix. So this means it should be like a list of lists. So um, let's make it a list of lists. All 
All right, now it's a list of lists. No errors. And if we go to the spreadsheet, we could see, yes, it updated. <laughs> Victory, right? All right. So it's a little confusing because you can see it's a trade because it's it's designed to do ranges, right? So if you're only doing one value, it has to be a range. Um, but there's also a way of doing this. Um, um, celebrations. Okay, so you could do it also in the one liner here too. So if you don't want to do it like that, if you're more comfortable doing one cell at a time and not like a range, you could say, okay, worksheet, update value. And we're going to say, let's update, um, let's update uh, C12 to something. So we'll say update C12 to another one. All right. So if we take a look, yep, it updated it, right? So it's it's writing out, you know, it's, it's updating the sheet. And so, you know, you've probably spent some time in here to, there's a lot of stuff you could do, right? Um, Uh, it really depends on your application, what you want to do. Um, you might want to get certain ranges of rows, you know, find the last row that's been updated and add more data to it, um, all this stuff, right? And so, you know, there's many ways of doing that. You just have to figure out what you want to do with your application and then um, figure out how the API can support that. But, you know, it's a it's, it's a little bit of a laborious setup um, to get your, your OAuth key working and everything. But once you have it going, it's pretty straightforward to start uh, interacting with the shell. So I think that's it. And thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.